Hello. Hi, Kai12546 here, and today we're going to talk about the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. For the, the Mass was prepared so that we would first talk about uh, the, the Word of God, in which we do the, the readings and the Responsorial Psalm, and then the second reading, and then the Gospel. Now, the way it usually works for that is the first reading is usually from the Old Testament, and then the Responsorial Psalms were all the Psalms that were sung about Jesus and about God. And the second reading is usually about all oh, the Acts of the Apostles or, or one of the letters written from, from, the, uh, from the disciples and the early apostles. And the Gospel is usually the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Anyways, first what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, we're going to, and then it goes, for, we go further and uh, we prepare the sacrifice of, of uh, Jesus and we and we sing songs of praise and then we do our prayers and get ourselves ready for the communion and then we have the supper. Anyways, first we're going to go to the book of Genesis. And chapter 14, verses 17 through till 20. But I'm going to focus in on the King Melchizedek. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. Now, a couple of things about that. Like I said before about Salem being Jerusalem, as time went on, uh, he gave the bread and wine to Abram. And that was just before God's covenant with Abram, that he was to be the, as many as are the stars in the heavens, that's how many descendants you'll have. Now, go further into the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Three times, God, our Lord and God says, the day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall Celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. So this this is going right straight through. The whole entire, through the Davidic lines, that was to be followed. And again, it says on in verse 17, you shall observe the festival on unleavened bread, for on this day I brought you out of the land of Egypt, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a perpetual ordinance. Again, perpetual ordinance. And again, on a, in, in, um, in verse 20, 24, you shall observe this right as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children when you come to the land that the Lord will give you as he promised. You shall keep this observance. Oh, it's 25. Sorry, my mistake. Anyways. And further on, these are all precursors of uh, God's dissertation and Jesus' dissertation about him being the bread of life. Um, in Exodus chapter 29, under the daily offerings, verse 38 and 39, now this is what you shall offer on the altar, two lambs, a year old, regularly each day. One lamb you shall offer in the morning, and the other lamb you shall offer in the evening. And with the lamb, one-tenth of a measure of choice flour, mixed with one-fourth of a hint of beaten oil, and one-fourth of a hint of wine for your drink offering. Yeah, bread and wine. It it goes through. Uh, we also have uh, in the. Uh, and you'll notice 
Another thing you'll notice about uh, all the different times, it keeps going back to uh, you know the fact that this was to be. It was supposed to happen every day when when the Jew the Jews went to the temples and they prayed. This was what happened. Okay, I in chapter 19 of Leviticus. And the priest shall make their atonement. Uh, this is verses uh, 22. And the priest shall make atonement for him with the ram of guilt offering before the Lord for his sin that he committed. And the sins he committed shall be forgiven him. And it, further on, it goes to say in the second chronicles chapter 26 verses 18 they withstood king Uzziah and said to him it is not for you Uzziah to make offering to the Lord but for the priests that the descendants of Aaron who are consecrated to make offering go out of the sanctuary for you have done wrong and it will bring you no honor for the Lord God. So it's a, it's with the priests that were the only ones who were allowed to do the sacrificing. And again, it's through the perpetual ordinance, as was referred to earlier. And we're going to go to the to Psalms, uh, Psalm 76, verse 1. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. And in Psalm 110, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. And as you know, Melchizedek was the one that was uh, gave the bread and the wine to Abram. And also, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 17, For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. And again, it's that's a, the Davidic line. And, it, and as Matthew had stated when he was when he was writing down about the Davidic line 14 generations before Babylon, 14 generations afterwards, that that will never lack a man, and that Jesus was the fulfillment of that. And the Levitical priest will never lack a man in my presence to offer burnt offerings, to make grain offerings, and to make sacrifices for all time. It's not just about, uh, this was again to fulfill the prophecy that uh, Jesus was going to be the everlasting king. And further on, in the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, on that day, the Lord their God will save them, for they are the flock of his people, for like the jewels of a crown, they shall shine on his land. But what goodness and beauty are his, God shall make the young man flourish, and great sorry, grain shall make the young man flourish, and new wine the young women. Again, grain featuring bread and wine. Also in the in the book of Malachi, chapter one and verse eleven, for from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, and a pure offering. Now, as you know, with Jesus, he gave himself up, and he was the final sacrament. He's the final, uh, he's the final act of the covenant of the, of, the, of the Jews. Now, we're now going to go further into the book of Matthew. So we go to the book of Matthew here. Just takes me one moment. Okay. Like I was saying to you before about the, the Davidic line of the the Jews. 
in the first chapter, one of the things that, uh, that uh, Matthew did was he went through all the de- generations from Abram to that de- generations, or 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations again. Now, in the book of John, the other thing is, is that we're going to go back to chapter 1 in the book of John, not chapter 6 yet. And the reason why is we're, I'm going to go through with chapter 1, verse 6. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as, written, as witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And further on in chapter 14, And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory uh, as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Now, in chapter 6, this, this will take just a sh- short while here. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you, you have seen me, and yet do not believe. And later on it goes to talk about, then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say now, I have come down from heaven? It is written in the prophets, uh, verse 45, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. And later on, that's when most of the people left and the disciples were saying, when Jesus said to them, are you going to leave also? Peter was the first one that said, To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And further on, in the book of Matthew, during the Last Supper, I'm just going to go to the book of Matthew here. I'm going to talk about the... going to hear it further on down. Sorry about this. 
Anyways. That's a good one, Dave. The destruction of the temple is foretold. The Institution of the Lord's Supper, chapter 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, they had eaten real bread and they drank real wine. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And again, this was about the perpetual ordinance of all the priests and of all the, the leaders of the followers of Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that was to fulfill that of all the covenants, there's at least one physical element that we can wrap around that we can actually either see, taste, touch. Anyways, I want to say may God bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And let's conclude by saying in the name of our Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about a couple of things. First, I'm going to be talking about the reference to why it is that we call our priests fathers. In addition, we're also, I'm also going to briefly start talking about the role of the queen uh, in, the, in the Davidic line of the Jews, in which it was the queen, and I'll give you references, where it was the queen that you were to talk to first, and... And then I'll show you, the again, the Davidic line. Anyways, may God bless you and keep you all the days of your life. Take care. Bye.